so i did my undergrad from pit university velour in 2013 in electronics and communications engineering and after that i was lucky enough to get into qualcomm which is a core company in my field i worked there for about 4 years at qualcomm which really helped me in narrowing down what i wanted to do going ahead in my life i feel like if you get into a very big company it just gives you a lot of perspective on how things move the industry moves so it's always better to gain some work experience just to make sure that how you want to see your life going ahead and i think qualcomm helped me in narrowing it down a lot that where do i see myself and which path i want to take currently doing a phd in electrical engineering basically in nyu uh, they call it electrical engineering but it all comes under again electrical and computer engineering but for now as long as things don't change till the time i graduate the degree would be a phd in electrical engineering i decided that you know like i got basically another year of experience and so like 5g in my field was something which was very new and it was just coming up and i was lucky enough again to get into the team there in qualcomm which actually changed my perspective and i didn't want to do a masters anymore i thought that you know masters is okay because initially i was working on some older technology and i didn't feel like there's much scope of research but then if i went when i went on to a new technology i just felt like you know there's much more to do here so i decided to apply for a phd it's been a while so actually i am not exactly remembering but let me try my best so i had applied to uci which was irvine i had applied to i think uh, stony brook the one in long island and uiuc was one and there was penn state uh, i think and there was georgia tech uh, there was northeastern university university of washington seattle i applied to like about again seven or eight universities for phd plus masters plus but i think those were all like in the top 10 or 15 of my fields but for my phd i didn't get a admit from like out of eight i got seven rejects and one admit and the seven rejects three of them were willing to give me masters but then now because i had a fully funded phd admit i didn't want to go for a masters anymore so i chose this road my gpa in my undergrad i don't remember like the exact but it was near about 92% so in india it's like out of a scale of 10 we have like 9 9.2 or something so i was something like 9.2 is something my tofl score i think was 114 and i had actually not given my gre so because during our time we were having all optional so i had not given my gre as well with the phd the ideal avenues are depending on again how you see your career but the most important things are like you could get into r&d especially in the us if i mean not immediately but if you are here for a while you could definitely work on defense projects and obviously us has like a very high defense budget so you do like top research and everything is like at the cutting edge of things so there is r&d government corporate so those are two fields most of the big mncs they have their own corporate r&d so uh, don't have to yes, explain much on that everyone is aware about that so there is a corporate r&d you have corporate r&d jobs government r&d jobs then you can either go to the academic line where you can become a professor i mean becoming a professor you have to have a phd there is like nothing to it so that's like the first thing to get into that academic line the second the third thing would be like because of your expertise in a particular area you can now start your own company collaborate with people provide services or become a consultant so there are two things again that could branch out have your own firm startup sort of a thing if you're not into that you could become a freelance consultant who could just advise technology companies on your area of expertise so those are like freelance work and you get paid there is another i would say an area which is like uh, patent filings like it's not very directly related to a phd but 
I mean, there is a patent attorney, and there is one more who just, you know, does a patent filing for different companies, and you're on that council who basically looks up the patent literature to see if things exist, and they file on your behalf. So that is another area because now with a PhD, you get really specialized, and you understand the process. So I would say there are about four or five very different avenues that open up. I have like so many plans to be very honest, but my first plan would definitely be to you know get real expertise in my field, and then if I get like really really good and I like whatever I am doing as my PhD progresses, I would probably want to start my own company where I could provide certain products or solutions because I think once you get highly expertised at something. Pursuing an avenue which provides you the business opportunity, starting your own venture, it's definitely good because the faster you do it, the better experiences you have, and then even considering a one percent chance or maybe a ninety-nine percent chance of failure, you can still shut it down and go back to all the R and D and every other job that I talked about. So there's always those options. I'm probably did in my career move back to academia. Because I feel like once you get the experience there and you come back here, for me I feel like because in corporate there is always something like where they say that you know you retire by so and so, so by 56 or 60 you retire. I don't want to be that person who sits after 60 at my home because professors you don't have a retirement age. You can basically work, consult as long as you want till you breathe. So I feel like in my later half of the career, even if I go into corporate R and D, I would definitely want to come back to. Academics and get into some sort of a professor and have my own lab and work on things because it's yeah it's it's a fun thing to do because once you get really good at things you start automatically enjoying and loving it and then even if you grow older every day of your life you're waking up and solving things that that's a very good motivation.